האם זה באמת סגולה בדוקה? אז סגולה ללמוד בזה? Good evening, Erev Tov, Dov Rav Yetcher. We are in uh, the Zer Shimshon on Parshas Kisovo. And we're going to look at three psukim before we uh, begin the words of the Zer Shimshon. They're from three different parshios. The first pasuk deals with the mitzvah of chala, hafrashas chala, separating chala. It's from Parshas Shlach. Uh, so this is Sefer by Midbar, Perik Tesvav, Pasuk Chafalaf. And the pasuk says, from the first of your kneading, kneading here with a K, like kneading dough, from the first of your kneading, you should give a portion to Hashem for your generations. So that means when we need dough, we take off, we separate off a portion, and we give it to Hashem, uh, meaning that it was actually given to uh, to the uh, to the Kohanim. That's in Parsha Sh- Parshas Shlach. Now let's take a look in Parshas Akev. This is a famous pasuk about the Shivat Haminim, the seven species that Eretz Yisrael is praised for. And this is uh, say for Devar and Perak Ches pasuk Ches. Eretz Chito Usaora, the land of Israel is called a land of wheat and barley. The Gefen Usaena Verimon and uh, and wine and and uh, grapevines and figs and pomegranates. Eretz Zeis Shemen Udavash. It's a land of olive oil and honey. So those are the Shivat Haminim. And then the third pasuk is from our parsha. Parsha uh, Kisovo, actually the first two psukim in the Parsha. Vehaya Kisovo el Haaretz, and it will be when you come into the land, Asher Hashem Elokecha Nosein Lechon Nachalo, that Hashem your God will give you as an inheritance, Virishto Vyoshavto Bo, and you will inherit it and you will settle in it. Next pasuk, Velokachto Meireshis Kol Pri Ha'adama, and you should take from the first of all of the fruit of the ground, Asher Tavi Me'artzecha, that you bring from the, your land, Asher Hashem Elokecha Nosein Loch, that Hashem your God gives to you, Vesamto Vatene, and you should put uh, these uh, this first fruit in the basket, vehalachta el hamokom, and you should go to the place, asher yivchar Hashem elokecha, that Hashem your God will choose lishakain shemo sham, to cause His name to dwell there. That of course means the Beis Hamikdash in Yerushalayim, and the psukim continue to tell us about a, a amazing ceremony. The people would bring their baskets of bikurim, of first fruits, to the Beis Hamikdash, present the first fruits to the Kohen, and then make a very beautiful and special recitation uh, that's that's given in the beginning of our parsha of Parshas Kisavo. So those are three psukim, uh, all of which will come uh, become very important in this Zera Shimshon section. Parshas Kisavo Os Aleph. Section number one, the words of the Zer Shimshon, You should take from the first of all of the fruit of the ground. Perish Rashi, Rashi explains, May Rashis, from the first, Velo, call Rashis. That means, by, for the to- because the Torah put the Mem there, May Rashis, from the first, it means to tell us not all of the first. She'ain call haperos, because not all fruits, chayovim bibikurim, are obligated in the mitzvah of the first fruits. El shivas haminim bilvad, it only applies to the fruits of the seven species. Ne'emar kan eretz, as we see, the Torah here uses the word land, Venemar lehalon, and it also earlier on in Devarim it uses the word land with the pasuk that we read Eretz Chita Usa Ora, a land of wheat and barley, etc. Ma lehalon mishivas minim, just like earlier on in that pasuk where it uses the word Eretz, it was specifically talking about the seven species of Eretz Yisrael. Afkan, so to hear 
the mitzvah of Bikurim, of bringing the first fruits to the Beis HaMikdash and presenting them to the Kohen and making the recitation, all that whole mitzvah only applies to the Shiva Taminim, to the seven species. So if a farmer or a person, anyone, grows apples, pears, peaches, you name the fruit, if it's not a, fr- in area, I'm talking about in Eretz Yisrael, if the person grows beautiful oranges, Jaffa oranges, whatever they're growing, if the fruit is not one of the Shiva Taminim, it's not grapes or dates or figs uh, or pomegranates or olives, then the, the mitzvah of Bikurim doesn't apply. You don't bring those, uh, the first fruits of those, all those other species, no matter how delicious, no matter how beautiful, you don't bring them to the base on Mikdash for the mitzvah of Bikurim. That's the first, uh, that's the first paragraph. Next paragraph. Vehiksha ha-re'im. The re'im, re'im is, a, is an abbreviation that stands for Rabbeinu Eliyahu Mizrahi, uh, who was one of the first commentaries, an early commentary on Rashi. So when you have Rashi's commentary and then you have a commentary on that commentary, that's called a super commentary because it's not just a commentary on the Torah. It's a commentary on a commentary on the Torah. And that is the the Re'em, the Miz, usually just called the Mizrahi. So the Rabbeinu Elio Mizrahi asks a question. De in Cain, if so, Lama li kra de me reishis velo kol reishis. Why do we need the pasa to learn anything from the mem, the word meiratius, and not all from the fr- fr- from the first fruits, but not all of the first fruits? Why do we need that drusha at all? Tepukle mi gezerah shavu. Why can't we learn everything we need from the gezerah shavu? We'll explain what that term means in a moment. De eretz eretz of the two words land vechule etc. She'ain kol ha-peros chayovim bibikurim. Learn from there. Learn from the Gezerah Shava, which, which uh, is based on the repetition of the same words in two different places, that not all fruit is obligated in the mitzvah of bikurim, only the fruit of the shivat haminim, of the seven species, as we said. So let's, there, the Re'em asks two questions. Let's pause here, explain the first question. Rashi, in the, that the, who the Zerah Shimshon uh, brought his comments in the first paragraph, seems to make two, seems to bring two ways, two methods, you might say, or two ways that we can learn out this law that he, what Rashi wants to teach us, that the mitzvah of Bikurim, of bringing the first fruits to the temple, to the Beit Hamik, Beis HaMikdash, only apply on the Shivat Haminim fruits, but it doesn't apply to other fruits. So Rashi says there's two ways, seems to say there's two ways to learn it. The first way is the Torah says, May Reishis, don't bring all of your first fruits, just bring some of your first fruits. So that's right there. You see, it's not all, it's only some. And then Rashi, and, and that's the Shivat Haminim. And then Rashi says, also, look at the Gezerah Shava. A Gezerah Shava is a technical term that refers to, it's a way of learning things out, of, of, of learning out a drusha, learning out something that's not clearly stated in the Torah, where we have a word used in one place, and we have a word used, the same word in a different place, and we have a halacha l'moshe misini, we have a mesora, a tradition going all the way back to Moshe, meaning Hashem explained this to Moshe as part of the Torah Shabbal Pel, the oral Torah, that these two words, the same word, were used in two different places to make certain comparisons between the two different sections that are being talked about. So just like the word Eretz, when it's used previously before our Parsha, and that specific Pasuk is talking about the Shiva Taminim, so too when it talks about Eretz over here regarding the mitzvah of Bikurim, of the first fruit, it's only talking about the Shiva Taminim. So the Re'em says, why did Rashi bring both drushos? Why did Rashi bring two different ways of learning out the same halacha? Why didn't he just... uh, why didn't he just teach us the use the Gezeira Shava, the Eretz Eretz learning interpretation or Drusha, and therefore, and then he wouldn't have needed to bring the uh, focus on this idea of Meirei of learning it from the Pasuk. That's the Re'im's first question on Rashi. Continuing, the Ode, and another question, my Shnahacha, what's the difference over here 
over here meaning uh, means regarding the first fruit, the mitzvah bikurim, the darshe me reishis velo kol reishis, that we interpret the word me reishis to mean some of the first fruits, but not all of the first fruits. Lema'e to exclude shelo yiyu kol ha'ilonos chayovim bibikurim, to bibikurim. To, to exclude and teach us not all fruits are obligated in the mitzvah of first fruit, elamik tzosan bilvad, but only some of them, namely shivat haminim. Why, why is it that we use the mem to teach us that here? Umay gabe chala, but and what's the difference regarding the mitzvah of separating chala, which is the pasuk we read first, the darshi that the, that the chazal interpret may reishis, from the first of your kneading of your dough, the low call reishis, and not all of the first kneading, lemaet, which excludes shelo yaasef call isoso chala. A person should not make all of the dough that he is kneading into chala. We separate off a portion of the dough that we're kneading to do the mitzvah of chala. We don't make all of the dough that we're kneading into chala, into the, uh, to do the mitzvah of separating chala. Hachanami, here also, Nemo, we should have said, Shelo Yaasef Kol Harashis Bikurim. If we wanted to be consistent, we would have said, a per, here we can learn from the Mem, the May Rashis, that a person should not make all of the first fruits uh, into his mitzvah of Bikurim. Uh, but, uh, but we don't say that. We use the word May Rashis to teach a different law here than we teach regarding Chala. And uh, a lot of answers are given, which are very, uh, which are very pressed. They're very like they're pressured answers. They don't really seem to answer the question. But I and Shaman, you should see there in the Re'im commentary on Rashi to see the answers that he brings. But the Zer Shimshon is already telling us that those answers uh, are not, he doesn't view them as fully satisfying answers. So let's make sure we understand the second question. The second question is that this idea of looking at the mem, the letter mem from, uh, and learning something out from it appears not just here of uh from the first of your fruits, but it also appears earlier in the uh, regarding the mitzvah of chala, but it's used in a very different way. There it's used to say, to teach us the law, the halacha, that when a person is wants to do the mitzvah of chala and they're kneading dough, they should not, they cannot say all of this dough is going to be used for the mitzvah of chala. They have to separate our part. And the mem says, may reishi, take part of your dough and use it for the mitzvah to fulfill the mitzvah of chala. That's how it's used there. But here we could have said the same thing. Take some of your first fruits, but don't take all of your first fruits. In other words, the, we might have thought, go around to your different trees and pick all of the first grapes, pick all of the first figs, pick all of the first olives, et cetera, all of the first pomegranates and bring them. And so the Taurus says, no, don't bring all of your first fruits, just bring some of your first fruits. But that is not how we use the mem here. We use the mem here, as Rashi explained in the first paragraph, to teach us only some fruit trees have a mitzvah of bikurim, and that's the and that is the shivat haminim, the seven species, not other kinds of fruit trees. So why that differentiation in the use of the how we interpret the letter mem? Uh, and uh, that's is the Ra'im second question. The Zera Shimshon, as he often does, is going to answer the second question first, and then only in the end circle back to the first question. So. Please note, we're about to begin developing the answer to the second question. Uledidan nira, and to us it appears, Ereshimshon says it would appear to us, meaning to him, the Khan Rashi Zeprono Levracha, here, regarding the first fruit mitzvah, lo havi motzi lefarish me reishis, el gabe chala. Rashi realized that he couldn't explain the word me reishis from the first uh, as, he, as it was explained by Chazal previously regarding the mitzvah of separating chala. The im came because if so, have a kosher milas kol. Then there would have been a difficulty with the word all. Here regarding Bikurim, the Torah uses the word all. 
How can the Torah say all of the fruit of the ground? We know that it can't be all of the different fruits that a person has. There's no mitzvah of Bikurim regarding all of the fruits because of our Gezei Shava, our, our learning from the two words of Eretz, Ein kol ha-peros chayavim bibikurim, elam yishiva sa'minim bilvad. We know that only the fruit of the Shiva Taminim is required to, is applicable and, and required for the mitzvah of bikurim. Umay, and what, continuing to the top of the next column, umay kol mashmalon kol pri. So if the word kol isn't telling us bring from all of your fruit trees, bring Bikurim from all of your fir- fruit trees, bring first fruits of, from all of your fruit trees. If that's not what it's teaching us, then what is it teaching us? lomar. But you definitely need to say, that the word call is teaching us, that a person is in fact allowed to make his entire field into Bikurim and bring all of his first fruits as Bikurim, that a person can do that, Kidisnan Perak Bez de Bikurim, as we learn in a Mishnah in the second chapter of Mesechas of Meseches Bikurim. So the word call can't teach us that you can bring a Bikurim from all of your fruit trees, because that is not true. That is not accurate. What, what then is it teaching us when it says call? It's teaching us that if a person decides not to just pick uh, one of the first fruits, not to designate just one of the first grapes and one of the first uh, figs, et cetera, as first fruit, but he wants to bring all of the first grapes, figs, pomegranates, olives, et cetera. He wants to and, and uh, bring all of them to the base of Mikdash for the mitzvah of Bikurim. He's allowed to do that. That's what Kal teaches us. And from now that we know that, may reishis tahacha, the word may reishis here regarding Bikurim, but regarding first fruits, eno vadai kimireshis tahala. It certainly cannot be compared at all to the word mereshis tahala from the uh, similar word from the first, uh, as it's used regarding kneading your dough. The bishlama hasam, we understand over there regarding your, your dough, peresh mereshis kipshuto. The word from the first can be understood in its simple meaning. The hamem memaetes miktsasa velokula. The letter mem is teaching us you can only you only bring some of your dough. You only use some of your dough. You separate some of the dough that you're needing for the chala mitzvah. The low kula and not all of it. Aval bekan, but here regarding the first fruits, ef shur lefarish hacha. Hachi, you can't explain it that way. Dechsev basrei kol, because the Torah says all and all teaches us that you may in fact bring all of your first fruits. Uh, with your in your basket for the mitzvah of Bikurim. So therefore, uh, we see that the mitzvah of Chala and the way the word Meireshis from the first of your dough is used there has to be very different than the mitzvah of Bikurim where and, and how the word Meireshis from the first of your fruit is used in reference to Bikurim. Next paragraph. V'chein hu ha'emes, and this is in fact true. The laws of Chala and Bikurim are not the same. They're not equal. The Hossam over there regarding Chala, Ein Adam Ose Kol Isoso Chal. Person is not allowed to make all of his dough into Chala for the mitzvah of Chala. Vechan, but here, Ose Adam Kol Sadehu Bikurim. We just learned a moment ago, a person can make all of his first fruits into Bikurim. He doesn't just have to take uh, one of each type of first fruit or one bunch of each type of first fruit. He can make all of the first uh, of each type of fruit into Bikurim. And that's why the Gezei Shava of Eretz Eretz is needed. The Elav Hagazera Shava, because if it wasn't for the Gezera Shava, Hayisi Mefaresh, I might have explained Me Reshis Tahacha, Kime Reshis Tahala. I might have mistakenly tried to explain that when it says Me Reshis here from the first of your fruits, just like we explained from the first of your fruits regarding the mitzvah of Chala. Umilas call, and when it says the word all, have amina, I might have mistakenly thought 
the also Liribuye call mine ha'ilanos, that it was in fact teaching us that you can bring Bikurim or you should bring Bikurim from all of your trees, all types of trees, not just the Shiva Saminim, not just the seven species. Aval Hashto, but now the Isoli Gezeira Shava that we have, the Gezeira Shava of Eretz Eretz, EF Shalom Arcane. You can't say that you should bring Bikurim from any other fruit except the seven, the, the Shiva Taminim, Kaniz Karla El, as it was mentioned before. The Zehu Kavonas Rashi Alav Hashalom. And this was the intention of Rashi, uh, uh, peace be upon him. May Rashi's from the word, from the first, Al Korchach Tzarech Lomar, you are compelled to say, the also lemaid shar haminim. It excludes all the other species of fruit, the, except for the shivas haminim. The eno kimo may reishis hakos of bechala, and it's the word may reishis should not be interpreted in a similar way to the way the word may reishis is interpreted when it's written by the mitzvah of chala. Vahainu mikoch hagzera shava de eretz eretz, and that comes. We we know that through the uh, learning of the gezeira shava of eretz. Eretz. Now, having answered the second question, Rashi goes back in this last paragraph, he returns to the first question. Ve'im tomar, and if you say, im kain may reishis lomali, if so, it, meaning if you can learn from the Gezeira Shava of Eretz Eretz about the fact that only the fruits of Shivas Haminim of the seven species uh, are used for the mitzvah of Bikurim, May Rashis Lamali, then why do I need the, the letter mem and the word and the word may rashis? Yesh Lomar, we can say the Osula Ashma Inon, it's coming to teach us Sha'af Itor Habikurim. Even the crown that you put on the first fruit, we'll talk about what that means. We'll explain that term in a moment. Eno Ela Mishiva Saminim, it can only come from seven species, Kisfaras Rabbi Yakiva Bimas Nisan like the opinion of Rabbi Akiva in a Mishnah, the Hilchos HaKavosei, because the law follows Rabbi Akiva's opinion. What is the Itur Bikurim? What is the crown of first fruit? So uh, the, the, uh, the Chazal teach us that the, uh, in Masechas Bikurim, that people used to, used to go uh, all out to decorate uh, the baskets that they brought their Bikurim, their first fruits uh, in, to the base of Mikdash. They didn't just pick, they didn't just bring beautiful fruits. They brought the most beautiful baskets they could uh, afford. If a person was very wealthy, he or she would bring a gold in, uh, 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 basket, a gold metal uh, container. And if and if a person wasn't quite as wealthy, they would bring silver, et cetera, et cetera. And then the Mishnah says, and if a person really couldn't afford anything at all like that, they'd make the most beautiful wicker basket that they could. And then and and things were decorated in the most beautiful way so that the mitzvah of Bikurim was done with tremendous hidor, with tremendous beauty and tremendous effort to beautify the, the mitzvah. So one of the ways they beautified it was itur bikurim, to put a crown of other fruits around the basket there, that they were bringing their bikurim in. Could they use different fruits that were not part of the Shiva Saminim for that? So that is a machlokas in the Mishnah. And Rabbi Akiva says no. Rabbi Akiva says even for the decorative things that you're doing to put around and on top of your Bikurim fruit, you can only use other fruits of Shiva Saminim of the seven species. They, those other fruits that make the crown and, the, and are there only for decorative purposes are, don't need to be first fruit. They're not first fruit. They can come from uh, later uh, fruits that grow later and you can use them to decorate your basket, but only the first fruits, actually, the Bikurim themselves, are the ones that fulfill the mitzvah of Bikurim. The other fruits that are put there, uh, even from the Shiva Saminim, are, are used only for decorative purposes and are called the Itur Bikurim, the crown on the crown of the first fruit. So the Zer Shimshon uh, has uh, has now answered his uh, the two questions that he that he asked originally, and also uh, along the way explained. Uh, several different things that we might not have known about the mitzvah of Bikurim and might not have known about the mitzvah of Chala uh, either. So a very interesting and informative piece, as always, in the Zer Shimshon. Yeah, Shakoch for joining in the learning of the Zer Shimshon this week. We look forward, God willing, to learn in the Zer Shimshon again next week.